Good morning, folks, and welcome to our time of worship together. Nice, nice to see you all on this bright, sunny morning. Um, my name is Gavin Drummond. Um, I've met some of you, and if I, um, I'm a member at St. Margaret's, I'm part of the worship team in St. Margaret's. So it's a pleasure to be able to come and join in the service with you, with you this morning. And a pleasure also to welcome the folk who are at home who are going to look into the service during the week. We start talking with God. Let's say, would you like to join me in saying these words together? Living God, remind us today of your greatness and power, of your will and your purpose, of your grace and your mercy. May that knowledge shape who we are and all we do today and always. So, that we, so we thank you that we can come together in fellowship to worship you. Amen. Folks, I want to think today about the disciples who went on a mission for Jesus and see, if, see how things have changed over the years. Because when Jesus was alive, he said he trained his disciples what he wanted them to do when, after he died, so that, so that um, they would go out and spread the gospel message that he was, he was preaching when he was alive. That message had to proclaim the gospel message that he was um, promoting. And it was, it was in many ways what we could call a subversive message, a message that was challenging the authorities and challenging, challenging the authorities and challenging the, the, Roman, the Romans who were, in, who were um, in, who had taken control of the country. It was a message that led to him being crucified on the cross and having that horrible death because he was spreading God's message. Jesus, the, the gospel message was revolutionary and designed to, to, ch to change the order of things at that time. And that was 2,000 years ago, wasn't it? Plus more than 2,000 years ago. And I wonder how much that has all changed in, in, the, in the, that time. Are we his followers promoting the gospel message as we should do? Are we engaging with people in the, in the community? We'll think about that in the next few minutes. But we're going to sing a song which is called You Are Before Me, God, You Are Behind. It's taken from a psalm and um, it's to the tune of Highland Cathedral. Rona tells me it's not one you've sung before, but you know the tune, and I'm sure you'll lustily you'll sing, sing the words, because I can't sing lustily at all. I'm told to step away from the microphone when the singing is going on. So let's join together to sing, You are before me, God, you are behind. Thank you. 
We're going to read some stories of the disciples going out to spread the good news. We're reading from Acts, their journey into Thessalonica and to Berea. In Thessalonica, Paul and Silas travelled on through Amphopolis and Apollonia and came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue. According to his usual habit, Paul went to the synagogue. There, during three Sabbaths, he held discussions with the people, quoting and explaining the scriptures and proving from them that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from death. This Jesus whom I announce to you, Paul said, is the Messiah. Some of them were convinced and joined Paul and Silas. So did many of the leading women and a large group of Greeks who worshipped God. But some Jews were jealous and gathered worthless loafers from the streets and formed a mob. They set the whole city in an uproar and attacked the home of a man named Jason in an attempt to find Paul and Silas and bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city authorities and shouted, These men have caused trouble everywhere. Now they have come to our, our city and Jason has kept them in his house. They're all, they're all breaking the laws of the emperor, saying that there is another king whose name is Jesus. With these words, they threw the crowd and the city authorities in an uproar. The authorities made Jason and the others pay the required amount of money to be released and then let them go. Then into Berea. As soon as night came, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived, they went to the synagogue. The people there were more open-minded than the people in Thessalonica. They listened to the message with great eagerness, and every day they studied the scriptures to see if what Paul said was really true. Many of them believed, and many Greek women of high social standing, and many Greek men also believed. But when the Jews in Thessalonica heard that Paul had preached the word of God in Berea, they came there and started exciting and stirring up the mobs. At once the believers sent Paul away to the coast, but both Silas and Timothy stayed in Berea. The men who were taking Paul went with him as far as Athens and then returned to Berea with instructions from Paul that Silas and Timothy should join him as soon as possible. Some words from the Acts of the Apostles telling the story of spreading the gospel. Let's join together. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Holy One, we come together today to give you thanks. We thank you for our world, which is full of so many wonderful sounds, the sounds of babies crying, children laughing in the streets, and children outside this church having fun and enjoying themselves as they enjoy the holiday from school. We hear the sounds of birds singing, the sound of wind blowing through the trees, waves crashing against the seashore, and even hear the sound of rain hitting the windows. Then the sun comes out, warming our bodies and our spirits. All these things, we are grateful to you for them. But we know that so often we just don't listen to your voice telling us what you'd like us to do, what you want us to do, and you want us to spread the message of your love for all. So we ask you to forgive us when we don't listen to that still, small voice, which might be asking us to do something that we 
feel difficult and hard to take on board. So Lord, will you help us to listen to your guiding voice and realize that you, never, you will never ask us to do anything you know is beyond our ability. So we come to thank you for calling us into this fellowship to be part of your people, not just living in isolation, but members of your family united in your church. May we be generous in spirit, tolerant, understanding, slow to take offence, swift to forgive. And help us to broaden our vision, not just to be happy with what we've I done, but to enlarge our understanding of the glorious gospel of love, joy, justice, peace for all, so that we, we go out to make more followers for you. In Jesus' name we ask these things and join together in the prayer he taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of my favourite songs um, in church is from Songs of God's People, and it begins with, O Lord, all the world belongs to, belongs to you. Do we, do we know that song? Yeah, we, we do know the song. Um, and the, the punchline the punch is the last line of each verse, which says, it's what's turning the world upside down. And I, 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 like, I like that, the thought that we're here to turn the world upside down, to make the world a better place. Are we, we have to ask ourselves, is that something we're achieving or, or not? Going back to the story of Paul and Silas and Timothy, they were working in a pretty messed up world at, the, at that time. Society wasn't a happy society. But we think, can we think 2,000 years plus forward? Can we say the society we live in now is a happy society where everybody is treated fairly and well? Well, think, I won't ask you to say yes or no to that, but I think there are issues we can talk about. The reading we had gives us two pictures of um, the Thessalonica people being against Paul and Silas and trying to persecute them and get them out, out of the way. Whereas when they came to Berea, the Berea congregation was much more receptive. It was prepared to listen. It didn't just listen and jump in immediately to what was being told. They went, they listened, they went away, they talked and they thought about the message and then they came forward to, be, to believing. And the story is, is very much that um, they, made follow, they made followers. And it was, it's interesting that it talks about, in both readings, it talks about women. Because um, it's very important that in so many circumstances, the Bible doesn't talk about women very much. It talks about women as a sort of backup team. But this is talking about women taking the lead. And there's no doubt that that is what we're, we're about. We're not about men and women. We're talking about everybody together, working and promoting the gospel message to those who, have, to those who haven't heard it. The story talks about the mob from Thessalonica coming in and um, trying to disrupt what was happening in Thessalonica and also in Berea. Were they trying to turn the world upside down or keep the world in a stable condition that suited, was suiting them? Because in so many ways, the rulers, that, the people in control at that time were folk who wanted things to be comfortable for them. 
They wanted their good life where they were looked after by all sorts of all sorts of servants and followers, and they were not bothered about if some folk were in a poor condition and were uh, unhappy at all. Have, have things changed over 2,000 plus years? Well, yeah, everything should be fine, shouldn't it? We're fine, we've got a wonderful society, everybody's happy, and everybody's looked after. Is that right? I would, I would, I would doubt that, if that's the case. So, where have we been in these 2,000 years? Where have the followers of Jesus been in these 2,000 years trying to change the world to make the message of love, joy, justice and peace from the gospel something real which is reality in our world today? Maybe there's a resist like an ongoing resistance to change. But I, I guess some of us can say that we do try to keep things in a way that suits us. Don't, don't look at the broad, the broad picture. And it's no longer appropriate to just do what have I done. We need to move forward. So we'll think about moving forward. And this is, that's the, the mob from Thessalonica coming and beating up the folk in Berea who wanted to follow the, the Jesus message. But we're going to sing again. Um, there's a spirit in the air. Is this one we know? Oh dear. Uh, if, I'm ever, if I'm invited back again, I'll try to do better with ones that everybody knows. There's a spirit in the air. Are things, are things better now than they were 2,000 years ago? Well, look in the papers. What's TV news? Look at social media. And there's no doubt in my, my mind that we live in a dark world still. A world which in no way displays the message that Jesus was promoting of love, joy, justice and peace. Think of of, in recent days, of the riots in France. Think of 
the protest demonstrations that have been taking place in the UK. Think about the power of the media, how that can, de how that can destroy people almost overnight. Look at the strikes we've had in, the, in this country. And I can go on. Think of the atrocities in Ukraine and other parts of the world. Just recently we've heard about the Ara Ara Iranian police making sure women are dressed properly. And if you, if you haven't clothes on proper way, you can be taken away and interrogated. Think of the refugees. The refugees, many of whom have been here for years, and, but, but also the folk who are coming across on small boats in dangerous conditions, many of whom are dying, but they want to get away to a good life and a new life. When, when I was looking at refugees, I thought back to a story I picked up some years ago. It was after the Windrush what Windrush affair came, came, became public. This is a, this is the state a story from a man who came across to, uh, about war, uh, just after the war, Second World War, and um, he spent his life here. He says, "I came here to work. We helped to rebuild London, which had been so badly damaged by the war. It wasn't easy. We had rationing. I remember walking around London." and you would not see a single black face. But I worked hard and made this my home. I wanted to build a life for my family, and I'm proud that my children and grandchildren have done well here, and now my great-grandchildren too. Now I'm not wanted. It appears that I do not have the necessary papers after all these years. And that guy was going to be deported back to where he came, where he came from. But he had no more, contact, no more contacts, but he didn't have the right papers. But over the years, he'd done so much to help, the, to help this country. Is that the kind of situation we want to be in, in this country now? But if we're talking about turning the world upside down, Paul, Silas, Timothy, they were preaching the good, the good news of the gospel message. And they were having an effect in their time. More and more people were hearing the message, believing it, and then going on to spread it around, around, the, around their world. I wonder if there's a message for us now that the followers of Jesus, you, me, and all our colleagues, our friends in congregations throughout the world, we live at a time when our churches, by so many people in the community, are seen to be irrelevant. We are in the, we are in the margins of our society, of our community. What do we do? Do we have to get out of our church buildings and be alongside folk where they are, telling them the story, but also doing things to help them in words and action so that we help them to have, find a better life and to believe the gospel message. It's not necessarily going to bring people across our church doors, but more people will believe the message and will go out to spread the word and to make the world a better place. We, some years ago, we had a, an intra, a locum in St. Margaret's from Canada. And he used to finish up his services every Sunday by saying, you can change the world. You, 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 me, we can all change the world. What we have to do is to pray and to get God's guidance as to how we should go ahead and do things. So we can change the world. The question is, can we change the world? Is that not what the gospel message is about? Making the world a better place for everybody. Is that a challenge for us in the coming days that together we can make a difference? We might not change the world, but maybe we could make things better in Forfar. Could we? 
probably a challenge God is giving to all of us. Let's pray together. May the words, may the word get around our God, that you disrupt our ways, challenge our being, cause, cause confusion on the things we think are our, our, our views and confront our prejudices. You discomfort us and you move us from a sense of complacency to taking action in what you want us to do. So in our prayers for others today, we want to think about the church, the world and the community, how we might turn the world upside down in your name. For the church, we pray that it will proclaim the gospel message in words and in actions, following the instructions of Jesus to go out and make disciples, not just to put bums on seats, but to make disciples so that together we will turn the world upside down. For the world, we pray. We pray for those areas where there are problems with war, with atrocities, with ethnic cleansing, with hunger, with drought, with extreme heat, with poverty. And we pray that those countries who have, who have plenty will set out to make the world better by supporting the countries who have these extreme problems to deal with, to provide them with enough resources to make an improvement for their people. And for our community here in Forfar, we pray for all those who find life difficult, where there are family and domestic disputes, where there's unemployment, where there, where there are financial problems, where there are addiction problems, where there's homelessness. May the community come together to make a difference for those who just cannot ma manage their own lives. And will you show us, Lord, how we, your people in the town, can work together to make a difference. And in a moment of silence, let's bring to God people or circumstances about which we are concerned. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I've probably painted a picture this morning of total doom and gloom um, about all the terrible things that are happening in the world. But let's not dwell on doom and gloom too much because all, all around us there, is, there are green shoots in our churches around the, around the world engaging more with people and be, doing what we're asked to do to spread the, spread the good news. So we shouldn't be too miserable because we're going to sing um, another song that I'm afraid you don't know. Um, the bright wind is blowing because we are a bright wind and if we're blowing appropriately, we do make a difference. So the bright wind is blowing. The tune you will know, it's the road in the miles to Dundee. So can we sing the bright wind is blowing?
Will you join me in these words, if you, if you like to, if you want to? We look around to see the people we've shared our time with, each of us beloved of God, each of us part of this community we call church, each of us an individual in your image, each of us loved by God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So until we gather again together, we go in the joy of God's blessing with us and all those we love and those we find difficult today and every day. Amen. Thank you, folks. <laughs>